All right, so let's start with how you got involved with this project. You know, uh, Bob Title came to me years ago on the first barbershop. I was unable to do it. Um, but after seeing it, I was like, wow, you know, I really wish I could put my own spin on a barbershop franchise. Fast forward to end of 2014, and he called me up and he said, hey, would you be considering, would you consider doing the third barbershop? And I was like, third barbershop, really? But, uh, you know, I, I read it, I said, oh, let me read the script. And he told me it was by Kenya Barris and Tracy Oliver, and I love Blackish, so I said, well, let me take a look. And I read it, and I thought it was great. Great, char great new characters, um, you know, very emblematic of, of, of the Barbershop franchise, that it was a lot of conversation about you know, a lot of different topics. And it also was dealing with the current situation in the inner city of Chicago, which is gang violence and gun violence. So I, I, uh, I said, well, I was very intrigued. And I said, well, let me see if Ice Cube and I want to make the same movie. He and I never met before. Um, he's a producer and the star of the movie. So if we weren't going to be on the same page, there's no reason for us to work together. And we were, thankfully, because I'm a big fan of his. And he reportedly was a big fan of mine. So um, that's how I got involved. Now, was it a challenge to you to try to bring, you know, given that the first two were directed by two different directors, was was that challenging to you to bring that same kind of momentum or, or uh, appeal to the franchise? I wasn't too worried about, you know, what was done in the past. I did look at the, the movies, um, but, you know, my whole goal in taking this project on was to try to make it as good, if not better, than the last two. Um, you know, because, you know, that's, that's the, 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 the competitiveness in me, number one. And number two, um, I, like I said, I, I, I want to make the Malcolm Lee spin on this movie. And for me, you know, it was a, it was, it was a, I always have a grounded approach when it comes to uh, making movies, whether they're comedies or dramas or what have you. And this movie has a mix of, of, of all those things. So I wasn't too worried about what was done in the past. And, in, and then w I had the leeway and the freedom because, you know, the beauty shop was combined with the barber shop in this. So we had a chance to, like, even redesign a little bit. Uh, with the film, and that included the, the guy's uh, side of the, um, the barber shop. And I said, you know, I told my production designer, I said, listen, Ina, let's make it like it's a bachelor pad that's been redone by a new girlfriend, or a wife for that matter. So, um, you know, I felt, a, I felt a, a, that we'd you know, make a great movie with that. And I also brought in, um, you know, my, my uh, DP, Greg Gardner, who's done three other movies with me. And I felt like, you know, we had to do, be inventive with how our, we shot the film, how we were going to frame things, how we were going to move the camera, just because it's a lot of people just standing around talking in a room. It could, it could be likened to a play. And I didn't want to make it feel that way. I wanted it to still be cinematic. Now, speaking of the drama and the comedy portion of it, um, or sides of it, how did you balance that out so that it didn't come off as too preachy, but yet it was telling a story, it was making a point, it was, how did, how did you balance that out? I, I pride myself on being able to, to balance, you know, the tones of, of a film. I feel like as long as the tone of the film is grounded and real and that people are playing it in a very real way, um, then, you know, anything goes. I mean, like, I try to liken my films as a, like a slice of life. You know, you know, I have very funny people that, that, that are in my life that make me laugh every day, you know, and, but life happens in a lot of different ways. You know, there are tragedies, there are funny things that happen, um, there are things that, that trip us up, but it's all part of the same, you know, experience that you're having. And I want the movie to feel that way. So, yeah, I mean, but at, at, at the end of the day, I want the audience to never forget that they're in a comedy. Even though we're going to deal with some serious issues, um, we're able to, um, pull that off. Now let's talk about the cast a little bit. You've got some of the old guard coming in and there's some new faces coming in. Now it were, how did you, did you have a hand in picking those new characters to come into the scene? You know the casting process was uh, interesting on this because we had to bring back a lot of the, the cast members and we definitely had to have Ice Cube and Cedric and we're so fortunate to bring back Eve and uh, Sean Patrick Thomas as well as Anthony Anderson. Uh, but the new faces, you know, was, there was an audition process, and we, uh, we made sure we really got really funny people. That was my goal. In, in, in order to make this movie um, one of the best or on par, I wanted to make sure that we had really funny people that we, we cast in the film. So, you know, J.B. Smooth came in, and he really wanted to, to, to be one stop. Uh, Dion Cole, who you know, has got his rise with, with Blackish, and he had been in the previous uh, barbershop, but in, in very small 
bit roles in this, he's much more prominent in this, as Dante. And he's what, you know, uh, Kenya Barris coined the phrase to mean a left-handed actor or a left-handed comedian. And so, like, you know, he's coming with stuff and you're kind of like, that's really weird, but it's really, really funny. And Lamorne Morris from The New Girl, really funny guy. I think his name is going to be a lot of people's mouths after this, uh, after this movie comes out because he's really, really funny. Um, and again, all these characters, all these actors embody characters that are very different. You know, they, they, they get, show us a wide spectrum of characters who are in the black community and people who are in the black community. And so the, it shows that we're not all just think one way or in a model. We have, we, have, we have debates about, you know, sports and politics and, you know, is Obama a good president? Is he doing enough for us? And of course he is. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that, that were there. And, 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 you know, of course, we've got Regina Hall, who's also, who I worked with twice before. Nicki Minaj, the part of Drea was written for her. I was surprised that she was interested in doing it. She actually pushed her tour um, in order to, to be in the film. Margot Bingham is, not, uh, is a great actress that, uh, that's coming up, as well as Uktar uh, and Bootkar. And I, don't, I would be remiss if I did not mention Common, who is, you know, the, the, really the, the, the epitome of Chicago. You know, he is the real voice of Chicago. So we were very fortunate to bring him into the, into the film and have a great relationship between his character and, and Hube's character who are both fathers trying to work things out with their sons and, and be there for their sons. Now, given this very eclectic and talented cast, did you give them a lot of freedom to sort of ad-lib or, or fill out their character apart from what was written on the, in the script? You know, we always start with a the, with the, with the good script and we try to like beat that up as much as possible. But I know going into it that you know, the actors are going to bring a lot to the to it um, that are going to surprise all of us. And I, I'd certainly welcome that because comedic actors find the funny in the moment uh, or they'll get it off of the, you know, their scene partner. And uh, I, I love that kind of thing because you never know what's going to make people laugh. Um, and you, it's, it's best to have as many choices as possible when you're in the editing room. And this was one of those movies that I felt more than any movie I've done before was going to be made in an editing room because we got so much stuff. You know, we had like a four page scene that would end up being eight pages just because people were ad-libbing and it made for about, you know, 16 hours worth of dailies on, on a daily basis. So it was a lot to sift through, but I didn't mind it because, well, I did mind it sometimes. But <laughs> it was cool because we had a lot to choose from and we had a lot of places to go once we decided to start testing it for an audience. And lastly, what do you hope that audiences walk away with after they see this film? I really hope that they're entertained and I hope that they laugh a lot. And, you know, thus far that's been the case. I also hope that you know, the message of gun violence and how the community can do something about standing up for, our, for themselves and, 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 and doing something to, to prevent such, a, such tragedies from happening on a daily basis uh, can really happen. And I hope that it, that can resonate with, with audiences. Fantastic. Thank you.